Living the Legacy of Love. Om Shanti and Season's Greetings. A special warm welcome to today's program, which is the launch of Living the Legacy of Love. Sister Manda and myself will be your hosts for this evening. And we want to really bring forward to you this beautiful initiative that we have been working on for the past several months, together with a beautiful young team from all over the world. It's a project that will bring together all of us, same time, daily, united in remembrance of Baba, but also it's a project that reminds us of the hard work that our daddies have put into creating this beautiful yagya. All the sweat, all the effort, uh, dedication, renunciation, sacrifice that they have made in this yagya. And so I'm very pleased that this project is taking place uh, finally. Uh, we're launching it on the 1st of January and I'm going to invite Sister Manda now for her to give her thoughts and also what has been your experience, Manda Ben, in helping to put together this project. Thank you, Aruna. It's been um, amazing to work with a, a fabulous group of young people. So I'd like to also welcome everyone to this evening's launch for the Living the Legacy of Love uh, it's uh, really a follow-on for the program that you are all so familiar with and loved so much called the United Yoga Bhatti. It was something that everybody spoke about with so much fondness and a sense of connectedness. So when we were asked to do something uh, for the family, then we thought, well, why not just actually carry that forward more, especially at this time, the feeling that we need to feel that connectedness more than ever before. And yes, it's been really great with this enthusiastic a group of people. There's about 50 people working on the project. And um, it's been lovely to actually see all the um, video footage of the daddies and really be reminded of the opp opportunity or sustenance that I personally have had. Um, so much love, so much vision, so much foresight. And um, it was something that you could never really ignore. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to be reminded, those of us who've had the opportunity, and also to offer that to those who didn't have the chance to be so intimately connected with the daddies. Right, Aruna? Right, Aruna? Yeah, Sister Manda, I want to tell you that I have my special Daddy Janky shawl on today. And uh, every time I put this on, it just uh, reminds me of Daddy Janky, her love. It's like I'm being kind of enveloped in her love. And uh, of course, such fond memories of the daddies. And for me too, I want to say that uh, because I was filtering some of the classes, it just felt so appropriate to hear that class at that time. It was really what I needed to hear. And that has been my experience with the project, that the right thing comes at the right time for our sustenance, as has been this project. So let us now um, hear from some of our seniors and hear some of their experiences with the dadis. so fortunate to meet many, many dadis. When I first came to Baba, I saw them when I was 11 years old. And then I became godly student at the age of 16. Then was more and more in contact with them. And uh, amazingly, I will just share the eight jewels 
from eight ancestor souls. But the scene which was emerging in me was when we were celebrating 50th year of university, 50 dadis were on the stage. Few dadas, other dadis, but very beautiful scene. And each one gave us blessings. And I still feel those garlands of blessings around my neck. My first uh, take was from Mama. Very, very natural effort maker. Constantly in company of Baba. Very wise and also obedient. She encouraged us to keep moving forward, not looking at anyone's weaknesses. My lot of training was from Didi Manmohini. Very friendly, very loving. And at every step, will give you some sweet teachings. And I still remember, very valuable. Our Dadi Prakashmani was such lighthearted, happy, always unlimited in her thinking. And a very, very good example for taking care of the yagya in unlimited way. When I think of Dadi Janki, I always remember whatever she asks, and I say, if I, I will do tomorrow. She says, who has seen tomorrow? And it's true because what we wanted to do that evening, I was not able to do anymore. So I always remember Dadi Janki's words. And then Dadi Chandramani, very joyful, carefree, always, always very happy. And also making everyone happy to an extent that we all will laugh with her. Dadi Manorindra, was storyteller, beautiful stories of Yagya. And we will sit around her and she will keep telling stories. I really appreciated the role of Dadi Santri, who was Baba's personal trans messenger. Very royal, very silent but very, very caring. And then I think of Dada Vishwakishore. We call him How Vishwakishore. Baba's right hand, very humble, and will constantly support the Yagya and follow Baba's directions. So I thought, I always wear garland of these teachings.
Om Shanti, everyone. I'd like to share about Devi Prakash Mani and her humility. When I first came to Gyan in 1975, I spent three months in London with Daddy Janki, Sister Sudesh, Sister Genti. But then I decided to go back to Australia to help in the small centre that we had in Sydney. I next saw Daddy Jank in 1978, and she had had to stay in London for apparently visa problems. But the centre in Sydney closed soon after I arrived, and in early 1976 I wrote to Daddy G, saying that I was willing to restart the centre, and she continued as my main mentor. In my formative years, I felt closer to her than anyone else, and she was so humbled. In early 77, I took a group of 16 Australian Brahmis to Madaban. It was also the time of the Mahakumbha Mela in Allahabad. And she called the group together and asked them if they would allow me to go with her to attend the inauguration of our exhibition there. And we were so touched that she was so considerate. She wanted everyone's good wishes to allow me to leave them there. Imagine. It's something we definitely would never have thought about. So in the small compartment of a train together with little Mohini, brother Ramesh, sister Usha, we went to Allahabad. And Dadiji entertained us with so many stories which showed us how little she was concerned about how others saw her. She was so deeply intoxicated with Baba that she had no thought for herself. And at the inauguration of our exhibition, they had invited one of the Shankaracharyas who demanded to be seated at a higher level than everyone else. And Daddy again showed so much humility in her appreciation of his presence that I think he must have been touched by it. So among so many of the virtues, her humility is unforgettable. Later, later that year, she visited us in Australia, and by that time, the centre in Sydney had two houses side by side. And she again showed that humility one day by making breakfast for all of us, a group of Western brothers, basically. And another time, she invited a group of double fire, foreigners for the 25th anniversary of service in Hyderabad. In one day, she inaugurated a couple of Gittapashalas, had a long press interview, a couple of public programs, plus lunch and dinner for contacts, and all the different places throughout the city. And at the end of the day, we were all exhausted back in the main centre, but she looked as fresh as ever. And I asked her, how was it possible to be so fresh after having some, done so many things? And she looked at us innocently and said, I haven't done anything. Perfect instrument consciousness without any ego involved. That's how I remember her. Isn't it lovely, Manda Ben, just hearing those experiences of our family members? Do you have something? Do you have some experience from Madhuban that really stands out for you? Would you like to share one of those? I don't know about one experience, but uh, the whole place has an incredibly close um, uh, sense of uh, connectedness for me. Um, every place is unique. I've had times when some years I would have focused on being in one place, another year I would have po focused on being in another place. But I suppose if you ask me for one experience, I went to Madhuban, I think it was 1991. Um, uh, unexpectedly um and it was a it was a it was just a very short trip and during that period it was as if every second every moment i was being guided by baba i felt baba's presence um as if signals were were being given to me by baba go here go there do this do that and it's the one experience that really created such an incredibly close bond between myself and Baba. And that bond um, never leaves me. I might go through phases of um, all sorts of different things, but that sense of belonging, the sense of connectedness never leaves me. So it's that one experience. But the whole place, for me, of course, when I say uh, Madhuban, it means Pandit Bhavan. Yeah, it's true. It has that special... Um, air, that special fragrance, just like um, if you smell some agarbati, some incense, it just takes you back there. Um, 
Yeah, you know, I remember a moment where um, I had fainted. I was young and I had fainted in Om Shanti Bhavan. And this was in the middle of Murli. And then the next thing I know is that like everybody's looking down at me. And uh, of course, maybe they wondered whether I had died or what, I don't know. Uh, but I remember the care that I got after that, that fainting episode. <laughs> And I was offered all any special dish I wanted to eat. And, you know, everybody from Shashi Ben to Banarasi Doctor to Atam Prakash Bhai, um, of course, Vallabh Dada, like everybody was just, you know, reaching out to take care. And I think it's these fond memories that we have of Madhuban from such a long time ago that still carries us forward. Yeah, great. Let's hear some more um, people share their experiences now. Om Shanti. I was remembering the days of my childhood when I first came to Baba and all of the love that I received from all of the seniors. But in particular, I was thinking about Dari Prakashmani and she was one of the first that I came to know when she traveled here to New York uh, to be at the United Nations and then to Washington, D.C. And, uh, of course, she came to Peace Village and then the various trips that I took to Madhuban. Each time I would see her, I would just experience love like I had never known. And uh, one time when I uh, was having such strong connection in my heart with her, I sat down and I wrote her a letter and I said to her, you know, Daddy, I think when we come back in the golden age that I'd like to be in your kingdom. And I sent off the letter to her. And then a few months later, I would travel to Madhuban and I got out of the um, the car. And I, when we arrived in Shantivan and I just ran to her cottage. And uh, when she saw me, she told me to come and sit. And I sat on the floor next to her chair. And she put her hands on my cheeks and she just took my face and she put it next to her, my, to, next to her heart. And uh, my heart started beating like thunder back and forth and back and forth. And then after a few minutes, she, she took my face and she set me back up. She gave me drishti. She looked into my eyes and I thought, oh, my heart is just melting. You know, she's going to say something so important to me. I must listen. And sure enough, Dottie said something. She said, Rita? Whatever you do, no attachment, no attachment. Om Shanti. Shanti. Whenever I think of Dadi Chi, Dadi Prakashmani, actually that image of 
unlimited love and care selfless service generosity lightness joy and at the same time discipline that image comes in front of me it was visible in every gesture of her every action every word you could clearly see that feeling of love and care for everyone in her eyes she was really a jewel a diamond with many facets i will talk about one she was a loving and caring mother who knew her every child who loved appreciated everyone and was very much concerned about the welfare of each one i recall a story of a uh, story actually an incident of 80s it was late 80s i was in madhuban and it was afternoon after lunch time dadi ji was sitting with few guests in the courtyard of madhuban pandav bhavan and i just happened to pass by that side dadi looked at me and called me she introduced me to the guests and also told them about my two sisters who are taking care of baba centers in mumbai so dadi said to the guests that dadi need not worry at all about these three sisters they are very obedient very strong very firm and nothing can shake them dadi trusts them fully so i remember these words of dadi but at that time it was not at all clear for me what dadi wants to say what dadi means to say but the wonderful thing is that you have thousands and thousands of people and dadi calling me and telling about me and also about my sisters so this is the quality of a mother and only after few years passed i realized the value of these words that how important it is for every parent to see her every child or his every child flourishing strong determined courageous and standing on his feet and not only standing on his feet but is able to support others so i made it up it for my in my mind after that time that i should never be a reason for worry for my seniors so this way dadi not only like uh, noted me but at the same time dadi made me grow even more one small another example i would like to say is you know uh it was long long ago i was still studying and we used to go to madhuban as a group of komaris in summer vacation so it was a quite a big group about 20 25 komaris and uh we were so united among each other that if one is not ready to go to the class none of us will go we all used to go together during that time the class was in history hall and a uh, place for us was fixed uh, in front near the stage where the brothers used to sit and so one day what happened was that uh, one sister one kumari did not get up on time and so we were all late we were waiting for her and so we were feeling very shy to enter the class after we have got late and so we decided to enter the hall from the back door we entered you know like we were trying to hide ourselves and sat behind the mothers in little space but dadi was of course on the gaddi and dadi saw us doing like this and dadi called my name sudha why are you sitting there 
come in front and so all of us got up and slowly 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 between that small passage you know which was created between sisters and brothers we moved and went in the front and so in on one hand that they expressed her love for all of us but at the same time taught discipline so you know a lot can be said about her i have so many stories coming in my mind but keeping the time in my awareness i will finish i love dadi very much and dadi loved all of us very very much om shanti so that was very nice um always um some t- something touches when we hear other people share their experiences so i was wondering aruna actually if you had something uh, an experience of uh, one of the dadis that you might like to share yeah we well, we've been so lucky we're like we've had so many experiences with the dadis and saying good morning to them every morning when we were there but i will share one experience because i know many are sharing experiences of dadi prakashmani and dadi janki but i will share an experience of shilindra dadi and i don't know somehow i just clicked with her when i was very young i found her to be a modern dadi who could understand the problems of a teenager and anything i said she was just so compassionate and uh, she used to stay uh, when she used to visit madhuban of course otherwise she was in mumbai but when she used to visit she would be down at the bottom of training section and i would just run to her room any time of the day uh, if i was experiencing something and i would tell her and then you know what she would hold my hand and walk me to baba's hut and then we would sit on the floor there and she would just give me such powerful drishti in fact i can still see her face and it was like you know her drishti was like this laser beam she was trying to like kill that maya within me <laughs> i mean she must have had to try hard i think but no it was it was just if i look back now it was just so touching i think in those days we didn't quite appreciate right mandaben that how the dadis were so available yeah yeah It's true. What about you? Would you like to share something with one of the dadis? Um I have loads of experiences of um Dadi Janki of course, um, but as you say many others are sharing, but I I I suppose I would mention uh, uh Chandramani Dadi uh, because I found her absolutely amazing and uh, really natural. You know, people have this persona that the to be a yogi means to be very quiet and look very serious. whereas that is that is chandramani uh, just roared with laughter when she laughed and she would she would speak you know whether she was sitting on a gaddi or whether she was talking to one to one she was exactly the same whichever circumstance you found her in and so i i um, identified with her a lot and i liked spending time with her she she used to be in um, indrapras her room was where that janki's um, sitting room is now actually and so i really appreciated being in her company a lot and i remember her coming to london and also her laughing and joking with me so i think um tadi chandramani is also quite um, a prominent figure for me yeah she was really a happy dadi yeah so yes let us continue with the program My name is Moni and this name was in fact given to me by Didi 
Manmohini. She was actually quite well known for giving a little bit funny names. In fact, a sister in Japan she called Subji. And we said to her, Oh, Didi, that's too funny. And she said, No, no, she mixes well with everyone. And、uh, it didn't really stick, but that's the kind of name you'd get from Didi. Didi was very playful. I know many of the seniors were quite um, um, not afraid, but、uh, respectful of Didi because she was very powerful. But my experience was of fun and playfulness. I used to sit at her feet during morning class and I used to feel her love and her、um, protection, I guess, but also. She was very、um, engaged during class with Daddy. They used to kind of banter, they used to comment back and forth. So, another particularly funny incident was when we were going for a walk to Naki Lake, as we often used to do after class. Then I was、um, walking along and feeling something hitting my back. And I turned and caught Didi throwing little stones at my back. And she held her ha- out her hand with a lot of love and beckoned me. So I went towards her, I took her hand, and she grabbed it. She threw me again, just playing. She was quite mischievous. In fact, one time there was a hailstorm, and we were playing, putting these. Ice down each other's neck, and really, she was very, very funny. But she was also very cosmic. And one time, I was invited to go on tour with Didi by Daddy Janky. I'd just recently located to Hong Kong for service, and there wasn't really、um, a family there、um, in our c e n t e r and I felt I needed to. Make my stage very good because Hong Kong, as Baba said, Hong Kong is to the world as Mumbai is to India. That's what Baba used to say. So, a very, he said, a very Mayavi place. I was thinking, what is best for my stage? And I asked Daddy Janky this. And she said to me, if you don't want to go, don't go, quite firmly. And I was a little shaken by this. So, I went to Didi. And I said, Oh, I'm not sure Daddy's happy that I said that. And that Diddy, in a very beautiful, ethereal way, really, she said, Each one is a star, and in every star, there is a whole world. So you have to follow your star. And she really was such a special Diddy. She used to take her morning class notes. As questions and answers. She had a very keen, what Bob would call a shrewd intellect. Very, very beautiful. I went on tour with her to the US. I was in Australia at that time before Hong Kong. So I went to US and I went to、um, England and back to m a d a b a n So I really had the great fortune to spend a lot of time with Diddy. She asked me to come to her room every morning after class. And、uh, I was practicing Hindi, learning Hindi, and I would speak to her in Hindi. But she didn't even know that I was speaking Hindi. She would say, No English, b u d u She liked that expression. So I、um, have such fun memories with Didi, such an entertaining character. And there are many, many more stories, but perhaps this is what I can share with you to give you a flavor of Didi. Om Shanti.
Om Shanti. I would like to share three short experiences with very powerful messages. Once I saw Daddy in uh, Peace Village and uh, I told her I like to learn Hindi. And she said to me, what for? And I said to her, just to speak and to read Merli. Um, she said, a very profound response after that, saying that just learn the language of the eyes and you will learn all the languages of the world. And another time when I was in Madhuban and uh, taking leave, asked her for a blessing and uh, she was beginning to share and I said to her, just give me something very simple to remember. She got quiet, put her right hand on her chest, closed her eyes, and then turned to me and said, then increase the power of concentration. And lastly, I um, was in conflict, wrote to daddy, and uh, I was expecting a reply from her. And the one-liner message that came through fax at that time was, I still have faith you will transform. I still have faith you will transform. And today, these words are what inspires me, empowers me, guides me and keeps me not only close to my truth, but also to the truth of the Supreme Being. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, a very warm welcome to the launch of Living the Legacy of Love. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this series of sustenance. I know that we all have very beautiful memories of our ancestor souls, the souls who are now in the advance party, the daddies and the dadas who gave us so much through their lifetime and now even beyond. And I'm thinking in particular of one particular soul who just a handful of people from abroad know, and that is Didi Manmohini. And Didi Manmohini was famous for her deep, penetrating drishti, drishti that could carry you beyond this world to that experience of the meeting with the beloved in that region of light and love. Another thing that we all remember Didi for was her razor-sharp intellect. She was able to cut through fluff and tell you exactly what it is you needed to deal with within yourself. But she would also give you the power and the inspiration to be able to do it. Didi was also the one who inspired so many 
to be able to surrender their lives to God and to have a life as yogis and instruments to be able to serve the world. So I can share many, many things about Didi. And all of this sounds a little bit serious, but Didi was a lot of fun. I remember that she would meet us in the mornings after Murali, and she would ask us a question from the Murali, and she would take delight in failing us. And she'd say, you see, you see, you didn't listen to the Murali with attention. And so sometimes we'd prepare and we'd go with very clear memory of that day's Murli. And then you know what? She would ask us questions from yesterday's Murli. And of course, we hadn't prepared for that. And so again, she would laugh and say, fail, fail. But she was teasing us and laughing with us. And so she was the one who actually brought um, a whole new dimension to Sakar Baba's Murli's after Baba became Avyakt, because we saw how much attention she gave to the Murli. And she was the head of the organization together with Dadiji. And Dadiji was the mic, and Didi was the might, the powerhouse. Um, when she would see that Dadiji had left her room and the lights were off, and she was walking along that passage of the history hall, then she would say, I'm a student. I have to get to the class before the teacher gets there. And so then she would start moving very fast to get there before the teacher. And so she would sit like a student, which she was, and she would translate the whole Murli into questions and the answers from the Murli. And so today when we read the Murli and we hear those questions at the beginning, it's a gift that she gave Rajupai. She taught Rajupai how to create questions from the Sakar Murli. And so beautiful memories of these very special ancestor souls. And so I know you're going to love the next two months in which we're going to immerse ourselves in that experience of pure love that brings us closer to God. Om Shanti. So um, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, always lovely to hear inspirations from our seniors as well and their support and their blessings. So we're very pleased that they took time um, to give us their blessings and their messages. I know they have so much to do, but they really were so helpful in coming forward with their um, time and, and their support. So um, all that remains to be said now is that we hope to see you every single day from the 1st of Janu January at 12.30 GMT. So if you could um, make that a diary note and join, uh, let's experience that connectedness, that togetherness, that oneness that we will experience in the future in the golden age, but let's experience it here and now. So all the best and look forward to seeing you all very soon. Om Shanti. Living the Legacy of Love